So I'm really excited to talk about like how the divine masculine and now I know also the divine feminine um, elements and energies um, that you embody. Um, I'm, I'm interested to learn about like how it plays out in your Instagram, your content creation, and also your marketing. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's funny because I'm definitely totally different how I portray myself online than than here. It's definitely a little bit of a bit kind of thing. Um, it's not necessarily that that aspect of me definitely resides inside. It's kind of how I wish I was more often, uh, a little bit more outspoken. Like if I if I have a chance to write my words and I know exactly how to how I'm gonna go about each one, then I can be a little bit more unapologetic, a little bit more uh kind of um kind of strong headed on things like if I, if I really come to an opinion and think about it on things and really craft it like for each one of those videos I've spent probably even you know I get like I, I typically do videos online more so than writing or anything like that and for like a minute video I'll spend like two hours writing that and just like sitting there like writing it out looking at it looking at each sentence trying to figure out like each word the play like even then getting into it as well like the the cadence that I want with each one like where I'm gonna take my breaths and sentences um so it's like it's definitely a little bit more of a performance online than it is in here um I think the like the masculine side of things online kind of comes into play is the the protector kind of aspect um there's definitely some forces out there right now that i don't think have our best interest in mind and i'm trying to definitely expose them um i'd like to do so in the way that um doesn't polarize everyone else along the way um but i also kind of understand that um you know, no matter how you say things, some people are going to disagree and not give you even even the time or consideration to to understand you. So I think I think the masculine kind of comes into play there on that sense is a little bit more of the um, like. I don't want to say argumentative because if anyone comes to me, I would be like completely up for having a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but it is like very firm essentially is, is how I come across online for sure. Um, so, so I definitely, yeah, firm, firm is definitely an aspect of that. Um, other than that, I think, yeah, that protector side of kind of like being like, Oh, I, I see, I see some, some sketchy men waiting in the corners right now. And uh, yeah, if I can, if I can kind of protect some people ideologically in the meantime from that, that'd be great. Uh, because once it gets to a physical realm or if it, hopefully it doesn't, but if it ever got to that, then I would be out. Then I'm, I'm, I'm a pacifist at that sense. So. Yeah, I definitely see that. And it's, it's like done and it is, it is, it's strong and it's firm, but it's also um, not abrasive or like in a way where it would like turn someone off, like not, not me anyway, because obviously if it were like that, I wouldn't have been drawn to you, right? Yeah. I would be running the other way, but I think your, your page and your content is very, very artistic. It's unique. You don't see that, um, you know, that level of artistry on Instagram, you know, in the way that you express it. So it's very, you know, unique and it doesn't come off like rough or, you know, like savage in any way. Um, because oh, that's great. That's great. Cause yeah. I worry about that every single day. Like, no, I it's not, get, it really I get, isn't like, anxiety before every video for sure. Like as I'm writing each video, I'm like, Oh, am I being like too much here? And then, and then I make the videos and then as I'm editing them, I'm kind of like, uh, is that a little bit much? And then I post yeah. them and then I don't get any of that. And I'm like, okay, all right. That wasn't the one, but it's kind of like yeah. that feeling of the next video is going to be the one that people are like, whoa, you're being a dick. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> I don't want that. Like, that's not what I want. Well, you know, you have, I think you have um, good intentions and you also have like good delivery. So it's very creative. And um, to be honest, like 
if you don't trigger some people, then what you're doing is really not worthwhile. You mm -hmm. have to trigger some people in order to make changes. And you have at the end of the day, like you have to be your truest self, you know, and if you play it safe all the time, which you don't, and I'm, I commend you for that because you, you're brave, um, especially in this political climate, you're really brave to speak out on certain topics. So I commend you for that. And if you did not embrace that, then there would be no possibility of any change or transformation or moving forward or seeking the truth, because then you're just, you know, regurgitating what everyone else is saying or what everyone wants to hear that makes them feel comfortable. And that's not really what, as a cultural, you know, critic and commentator, you want to, you want to kind of rock the boat a little bit, mm -hmm. right? Well, yeah. Orwell's famous saying, like, I am a huge fan of Orwell. Um, I think he was, he was on to like, he was on to, he understood humans and he understood how humans operate on a, on a level that not many ever do. And one of the things that he said was, yeah, the more a society drifts from truth, the more it will hate those that speak it. Um, so it's kind of that and definitely going into all this, I, I felt like I lost everything, to be honest. Like I was working, uh, for like, yeah, good 10 years to kind of get to where I was. It was a lot of ups and downs. And I was like going into the pandemic that the, the one year prior to the pandemic, I was like, I was set, I was making good money. I was doing, I, I had a creative outlet. Um, we had just played our first headlining show in Toronto. We had had like a big, big crowd show up. We were, we were stoked like for our first ever show uh, as this duo, because I, I had done other music projects in the past, but for under this project, the first, um, the first time we had headlined a show. And so I was, I was feeling like in a very good spot. And then obviously the, the pandemic uh, turned all that on its head. And at a certain point, I just felt like, all right, cool. I've, all I've got left is my voice. Like, yeah, I've, I've already lost everything else. So that's kind of where I'm at, where, you know, that's why I'm a little bit more willing to speak out on things. And also why I don't like, for instance, people that gravitate towards my page are by and large like a lot of like very loving like it's actually I get a lot of like yogi types that kind of uh that kind of crowd and but the odd I'll, I'll get the odd um kind of f the system f those people kind of kind of vibe and in those spaces it's kind of like ah I don't I don't want that because I also don't think negatively about people for instance that may disagree with me i wholeheartedly understand the the like just the levels that are at play here with um kind of getting people to um go along with certain things and that's kind of where yeah i have compassion in that sense where you know a lot of people will be like, yeah, why aren't you speaking up too? Like F you, if you're not speaking up. And it's like, have you ever had your job on the line? If you sp spoke up, like, are you in that position? Like it, it could be, it's very daunting. So like, I don't hold it against people at all that are, whether they just don't feel that way, or even if they feel that way and don't speak out about it, I'm not going to come down on anyone for that. Cause I totally understand how, <laughs> how crushing that, that psychological aspect can be. And also even just being able to take care of yourself if the rug ever got pulled out from underneath you. Oh yeah. And that's so that's like become almost a reality now because yeah. of the heavy policing in the world and, you know, the, um, the shift towards um, socialism globally so you know the policing has gotten heavier and the censorship so I totally understand but I share the same perspective as you um, I feel very uncomfortable with extremes like people who have mm -hmm. go extreme left extreme right extreme anything that makes me very uncomfortable because I don't see the world as black and white I think the the world is very um, much more complicated than that and so I try to stay away from the extremes but 
other than that, I respect everyone's beliefs. Like you could, you know, I could be talking to you one day and someone else who has the opposite, complete opposite views. And I can still pull out like the gems from each and the wisdom from each person's perspective and, and, and ponder them. So I have no problem learning. And I just love to learn. Like I studied world religions Mm -hmm. and I'm so interested in learning people's minds and seeing how they think and why they think that way. And I, I, you know, I do it from a place of like non-judgment. And so, you know, that, that I have a share in common with you, but the extremes really do bother me. So if you could share that, um, that analogy you had about what is it called the horseshoe? Oh yeah. 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 The horseshoe theory. Um, so it's essentially that, you know, we think about the extremes on say a political spectrum as yeah, the extreme left and the extreme right. And, you know, say this is center, those extremes exist out here and they're so far and they're so different from one another, but really what the reality is, is the center is here. And as the extremes go out, they actually kind of come back and they meet, they meet similarly, like the messaging may be different, but the tools they use to get their, Uh, political agenda across or you know whether it be censorship or whether it be outright force um, all of that kind of stuff they it's all the same so at the end of the day I think no matter what side of the aisle tilts towards an extreme they end up in the same spot and that was uh, Orwell's idea with totalitarianism was yeah it doesn't matter what political ideology it is any any political ideology that's existing as as a sole entity in society will turn out to be a, a totalitarian society and we're definitely seeing that now i think where you know it looks like to me that a lot of people are kind of being short cited when looking back at history and you know they'll talk right now about say the authoritarian left and how, you know, if, in, if you're not talking about diversity and inclusivity, that you're going to get canceled, all of this kind of stuff. And it's like, well, also Lenny Bruce back in the 60s, you know, the comedian was getting jailed for swearing. That was because of religious beliefs that like, so it's like, that was just when the right was in, you know, cultural control, when religion was dominating the, the, the uh, society and, and everybody's behavior, then it was just as aggressive censorship back then. Um, you know, you even look back at, say, for instance, yeah, like, um, a lot of gay rights with, um, religion as well, like come in, come into factor there. So it's like there, I think it, it, it's really all about balance at the end of the day. Um, I mean, that's the Taoist belief in a sense is that, you know, all things, I mean, even to (laughs) quote a, uh, to quote a villain from a super, uh, superhero movie, Thanos, but like, you know, I, I don't think his, uh, I don't think his, his plan was all great, but he did have one line that was great where it's just like, yeah, perfectly balanced as all things should be. And I do believe that to be the truth, just like, you know, kind of circling back to everything here is like, you know, the left needs to be balanced with the right. The feminine needs to be balanced with the masculine, um, light with darkness, all, all of it from top to bottom, um, all, all requires balance. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's so true that like extreme left, you know, would be like Mao or, um, you know, that crazy North Korean guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Kim Jong-un. Yeah. Um, I will not say his name. And then um, extreme right, you know, Nazis and um, Hitler. I mean, at the end of the day, they're the same. Yeah, it's the same totalitarianism. Yeah. So it, it's so true. And so one thing I did, you know, as if you want to talk about like the collective consciousness of like globally, right? There is like this shift towards like extremism, mm-hmm. and I think there is an agenda behind that, right? And and. But instead of like focusing on that, I do, I do see the benefits of it too. So whenever there's like, you know, a clash between both extremes, I feel like there's also the goodness of it and the wisdom that comes from it is that there's also this pursuit of truth. And you see that a lot in our culture right now where the truth is being pursued, you know, even with like the Johnny Depp thing, the court case, right? The truth was pursued there and 
you know, with that other case, the, the, with the, um, what was that guy's name who said he was like, um, uh, beaten by like, uh, Trump supporters. Oh, Jesse Smollett. Yeah. 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 So I mean, like, but he was exposed. So it's like, and the Weinsteins were exposed and like, so there is this like pursuit of truth that Mm -hmm. comes out of like the extremes clashing, Mm -hmm. you know, and the polarization is not fun. It's not anything that anyone desires, obviously. Um, it's a terrible, it's terrible, but yeah, I think the polarization, sorry, I just want to touch on something real quick there, but like, yeah, I think the polarization comes is like, we can all agree, for instance, that Jesse Smollett faked that hate crime. And we can also agree that, um, you know, the, the, on, on the other end, the um, Johnny Depp aspect that the Me Too side where it's like, we can, I don't think there's anybody that looks at somebody like Harvey Weinstein and doesn't want to see him go to jail. I think the polarization comes and they go like, okay, well, how many Harvey Weinsteins are there out there? And then it starts to become, okay, we're not just identifying Harvey Weinsteins as they appear. We're actively trying to make people into Harvey Weinsteins um, or that, uh, that other side as well where what the right will do is like, say, look at something like the Jussie Smollett and then use that as a case to write off all hate crimes. They'll just be like, oh, they're all fake because that one was fake. And, or just like, say the Me Too movement, it'll be like, oh, because it was real in this one scenario, then it's real all the time. You know, the, so it's like, they, that's where the polarization comes essentially is when they take the, the they take the one aspect and they blow it up and they try to say like, all of reality represents this one thing that happened. And I yeah, think that yeah, that's so true. Happens. Yeah, and polarization is definitely a symptom of like extreme um, ideologies. Mm-hmm. So when usually, you know, and I'm so familiar with this because I'm Korean. So I know the tactics of like the totalitarian totalitarians. They're so like transparent when it comes like to a Korean. Um, there's nothing mysterious about them, right? <laughs> so yeah, it's as like soon as they start talking about democracy and for the people and all yeah, this. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. we need to help you. Like you got to depend on the government. But it's like you know, polarization is one of the clear symptoms of that. There's something happening mm-hmm. where entities are trying to take control. Mm-hmm of like the masses right and so that's that's been a symptom in every like totalitarian um regime Mm -hmm. so the fact that it's happening now right it's very um unhinging it's very people are getting anxiety and you know it's it's very it feels horrible like it feels horrible to see the symptoms and experience the symptoms and feel it and feeling divided against one another, right? But at the same time, there is good that's coming out of it when it comes to like pursuit of truth and people like just butting heads with each other and then coming to the truth. Mm -hmm. So that I think is one thing that we can like still say there's still some integrity maintained. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if it's going to, continue you know to get more extreme and worse or if it's if humanity can maintain the integrity right and understand and see the signs see clearly like take the veil away from your eyes and see that there is polarization and the symptoms are there and to you know like don't wait till it's too late (laughs) Mm -hmm. don't wait until like you are put in a concentration camp because you're wearing jeans. Like, mm-hmm. cause that's what's happening in North Korea. Like if you were, if you're, if any of your family members are caught wearing jeans, you not only are you and your family put in a concentration camp, which they call labor camp, but eight generations of your family mm-hmm. are also put in a labor camp because wearing jeans is a sign of capitalism, which is evil. And it's against the law to, mm-hmm watch any Western movies or wear any Western clothes. And if you're caught, not only are you punished, but eight generations of your family are punished. They could be like family that never even met you and they're going to be punished. 
I will actually say if anybody is interested, the uh, uh, Yunmi Park's book, uh, uh, In Order to Live. Have you, have you heard of Yunmi Park? Oh, yeah, I love her. Okay. Yeah, she's great. Yeah, defector from North Korea. But yeah, her whole book kind of about her escape from North Korea and also just what life is like in North Korea. And yeah, no, it, it's it's true. And, and we do reach those places. And, and this is what kind of scares me about today's present society is getting into the physical attribute attributes of everybody again um and, and really bringing that you know uh, peterson for instance has a has a good characterization of it he calls them immutable characteristics so essentially whatever we're given at birth what don't make us unique um is what we're focusing on right now and that's what kind of scares me no matter what the side is people are instantly looking for um, kind of group categorizations, whether, you know, on, the, on the left side, people will kind of make it about, you know, whether you're white, you're you know, racist, this and that, cisgendered, blah, blah, blah. On the other side, they just harp on liberals and all of that. And it's just this, this quick, jump to just identify somebody as the enemy and then offload the the concept of evil onto them is like extremely that's what that's what really scares me um for sure yeah and, and the dehumanizing because if yeah. you just call someone a tribe it dehumanizes their um personal sovereignty mm -hmm. it, it it disempowers like the the independent spirit of a person yeah. Because then I, I just call you Canadian. You're just Canadian. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, You're an not easy Liam. <laughs> yeah. it's an easy write off. Right. Yeah. And like, yeah, that that's that's something that that we do all too frequent right now. And I, I think we also like in history, we kind of oscillate as far as whether extremes are the, the rise and falls of civilizations, all of it, I think we're kind of in this natural cycle and pattern. Like, even if you look, it's, it's actually very creepy. If you look at the stock, like the overall stock patterns heading into the 1920s and 1930s um, compared to right now in, again, in the twenties and thirties of the, the 21st century instead of the 20th, they, they look literally identical. Like it, it's very creepy. So like, I, I think we are kind of like operating in this like reactionary things boil up to a certain point. We overreact, then they, they boil back this way. We overreact, they boil back that way. We overreact. And then it only gets worse and worse on each side as we go until there's an eventual kind of like actual crumble. And I mean, I hope that's not this one, but who knows? But like, I feel like we are kind of reaching a point where people can't even entertain ideas with one another. I mean, the symptoms are there, right? And the um, in every civilization throughout history, it ended up that way. Does that mean we're going to end up that way? Hopefully not. But from a scientific point of view, with all the evidence, we probably are headed towards totalitarianism because that's what all the other civilizations ended up either in totalitarianism or genocide, right? There's never actually been a time when that did not happen. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, most likely that's where we're headed and the signs are there, but um, hopefully not. Hopefully not. Hopefully there's more enlightened people, you know, in this time and this age and courageous people who are willing to speak out, who are willing to fight, who are willing to fight for the personal sovereignty of each and every person. That is actually something that's unique that isn't a thing throughout history, though, is America. Uh, America was the first of its kind. It was it really was truly the first experiment of its kind. So, yeah, we are super know, disagreeable. Yeah, but we need very that disagreeable. Yeah. We and like, that. don't get me wrong, like it, it can have its flaws for sure. Like it, it manifests in many ways, definitely. But as to how that will play out. I mean, you can look around the world right now and also look at how even even by state, you can see as to how aggressive certain policies were over the last two years in accordance with uh, gun ownership. It's like the states that have the most amount of guns 
got the least amount of lockdowns. And at the, at the end of it, um, you know, we, I mean, anybody that owns a gun and has their house loaded, I mean, I'm not one of those people. I don't have, I mean, I'm up in Canada, but uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where those people are highly disagreeable uh, typically. So yeah, I think that is very unique. And when you look at things like, for instance, Australia or Canada, where we never really had to fight for our freedoms, essentially, we never had to liberate ourselves, create our own thing. Um, there isn't, that's not really like embedded in the culture as much as it is in America, where <laughs> like, where, yeah, you guys are we very argue much about like, everything. <laughs> yeah, well, but also it, it is kind of like the aspect of like, no, 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 we fought for what we have right now. Like we didn't just kind of like, oh, we didn't just come across something like Canada, for instance. Oh, yeah, no, we bodies. fought for everything. We fought was like, yeah, you the fought French, we that. fought the English, we fought each other, we fought, we fought every, we, we're, we're, we're willing to fight anyone, right? Exactly, whereas like, for instance, Canada and Australia, um, New Zealand, parts of Europe, all of that, it's much more like, oh, we've always been a go with the flow type of country. So as far as, <laughs> as far as, yeah, so as far as what, America throws a cog like I could see America throwing a cog in the wheel of that totalitarian cycle as but I think that would just end up kind of like a self implosion more than going into totalitarianism which always leads to self implosion but and genocide yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah so it's interesting I could just talk to you about this like all day and I definitely want to finish that conversation um, on on uh, YouTube with you for sure. Yeah, because no yeah, I have a lot of thoughts on that too. Um, but yeah, so wow, we talked about a lot today. <laughs> we did. We got we got, um, we got through a lot. Yeah, so I want to leave people kind of on a cliffhanger, right? And so that I can invite you back on to the show. I would love to have you back on. But the last um, question that I do want to ask you is like, if you could share your top three tips on Instagram, Instagram growth, because the Instagram is shifting to like a video format, like TikTok. Mm -hmm. And for you, that's not really going to make a big difference. But I think just your content is like so creative. It's so unique and you have a, a really great following. So if you could give three tips about yeah, Instagram sure. growth. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, for me, definitely. I didn't get into this and I have been very fortunate as to whenever I started putting things out, kind of growing a community and having people like really latch on to it. Um, you know, I, I'm actually like still shocked. Like I, I think this is actually, this is something that I spend a lot of time trying to curate is trying to actually have meaningful connection, not just like the idea of, oh, I need to message back the people that commented or I need to message back the people that like actually like message me via DMs is like actually trying to understand who they are. Like not just being like, oh, you're a potential customer. So therefore I need to treat you like one and, and have you on my product, but like genuinely trying to get them to know, to know them as a person. That has been huge um, as far as like getting a community base. And I feel like that's why I get a lot of engagement on my posts um, is because a lot of the people that talk to me or, or say, for instance, comment and like on my posts are people that I talk to on a, a semi-regular basis. So that's one for sure is like paying attention to the people that connect. And then also, yeah, the video aspect, I get... So it's like, I get, I get deep into the aspect of trying to understand how our brains work on these platforms. So for instance, you have about three to five seconds to grasp somebody's attention. So that first five seconds of every video to me is like, okay, I need to like sum up everything, like essentially as to what I'm going to hit touch on in this video, like have them know what's on the other side of otherwise they're not really going to trust you to give their time. Um, so yeah, like right off the bat, grabbing their attention that that's big. And um, also, I mean, as far as growth strategies go, 
commenting a lot, but with like other other posts. So like I, I follow, for instance, a lot of journalists and news feeds and other and and I like comedians a lot. That's kind of my thing is like news and comedy. So I I just try to interact with their pages, but like sometimes I'll sit there for two or three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, trying to think about a clever comment to leave on this post. And that's where I'll get a lot of followers as well. Is like leaving, leaving insightful comments on posts, like something that, you know, not just like a, Oh, that's rad dude. Like, or, or something <laughs> like that, where or like fire emojis. Um, it's like, <laughs> it's like literally genuinely trying to touch on something about this post that everyone in the comments probably hasn't already thought of. Um, that that I get a lot of people coming to my page for as well for sure yeah how do you do that graphic thing where you're in like a square and the text is surrounding you how do you do that is that Canva in I I do all my editing on uh Final Cut Pro and uh uh Photoshop but sorry which which text around me like in my videos yeah like in your videos, you have like, you know, text around you and you're like surrounded by a border. Is that, is that mm -hmm. um, Final Cut? Oh yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah. Like all the, all the stuff, the thumbnails on my homepage that I make uh, in, in Photoshop. So I just made a bunch of templates for that. And then on the other side with the video aspect, like as far as subtitles go and the picture in picture, all of that. I make all of that stuff in Final Cut Pro. So like I, I'll end up just exporting a one minute or a one and a half minute file to my phone and then uploading to Instagram from there. Oh, nice. So yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm not building that stuff in Instagram or anything. I loved how you um, explained at, in our last call how like if you make yourself you know, worthy, not worthy, but if you build trust with your audience to gain their attention for five seconds, mm. then you can build your way. Can you talk a little bit about that before? Yeah. You go? So like whenever I first started, I was doing longer videos. I was doing like five, 10, 15 minute videos. And I was doing well in the sense that like I would have people engage with them, but as far as getting that message out to other people was very tough. Um, like I would have it within my friend group, all of that, lots of engagement, people really kind of like reaching out to me about hitting the nail on the head. And I, I do miss the more nuanced approach to things with those longer format videos. But what I realized was anytime somebody new, and I have this for sure, even is like, if I haven't heard of you, if I haven't seen your page before, if there's not something I recognize I, the chances of me, you getting me to watch your stuff for more than 15 seconds is pretty nil. Um, like no matter who or what it is, it's like I, the amount of time I have in a day is just finite. Um, and that's most people these days, whether they have family or whether it's careers or whatever it is, most people are on a treadmill on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's hard to get them to give you more than, yeah, 15, 30 seconds. So it's like, you have to, if, if really building an audience and I, I stepped away from the longer format videos was like, okay, I'm going to try to grab people's attention for 30 seconds. So that's where I started. I started uh, doing videos where it's like, isn't it ironics? It was like, was, <laughs> was like what I started doing like short reels with that. That was like the very first reels I ever made. And that whole thing was like, isn't it ironic that one thing, one thing that's none of my business but like these two aspects shouldn't be able to exist in reality together, but they do. And that was it. So like I started grabbing people's attention with that, with like 15 seconds. And then I was like, okay, I can do a minute video. And then now I'm doing like minute and a half. And then now I'm starting to produce longer format videos as well. And then hopefully get into like really long format, whether it's, you know, going into podcasting or whether it's going into, I would even like making straight up documentary style stuff as well, but essentially building a base that trusts you to give you that time now, because, you know, time is money in a sense. So um, just as much as anybody's going to, you have to build trust before anyone's going to buy your product or give you money for your consultancy. Um, just like that time people, people need to trust.
Yeah. I, I think that's actually one of the best business tips I've heard all year. Wow. Amazing. That's cool. <laughs> I love <laughs> it. I might share it. Great. Just a heads up. <laughs> I hope so. No, no, no. That's, that's totally fine. I hope so. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I'll give you credit. Don't worry. <laughs> Of course, of course, of course. Um, I'll send it along. Honestly, I, like even these ideas, like people will message me all the time and they'll be like, hey, I want to like clip your video into something. Like, is that okay? Like, I'm like, I don't care. Like right now, if I can monetize what I do on Instagram, that's great. If I can monetize the ideas that are bouncing around in my head, that's great. But right now, what I see in the world is there's a lot of bad ideas. There's a lot of stomping out individualism there's a lot of kind of group think and yeah if i can kind of provide people with the tools necessary it's like yeah i don't there's no there's no feeling of ownership on that like i mean like literally all of everything i talk about came out of these books behind me <laughs> and, and podcasts i've listened to so like they're not even my ideas so yeah like, yeah it's like if you if if anybody wants to use them, spread them around. It's like, there's never going to be any, any, uh, I'm, I'm never going to get upset at somebody that, yeah. Yeah. I love that. Love that. Um, that's the divine masculine shining through again. <laughs> <laughs> love that. I mean, it's divine feminine too, but it's just that perspective of like, you know, you're not, um, you're not for coming from like a, a, a place of scarcity or lack, you know, you're like abundance is, there's enough for everybody. Like, mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not going to own something that's idea. Like, how do you own ideas? Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like ideas are everywhere. Like, yeah. we, so I, I love that perspective and that's how I want to live my life as well. Like, I don't want to, you know, with my students and the people that I coach and the ideas that I share on Instagram, I want it to be like a collective. I don't want it to, I don't want to try to own something and hold mm. on to it so tight and then feel jealous when like someone, you know, else uses it. So I think it's like such an open-minded perspective, um, what you just shared. And I loved having you on today. I really enjoyed our discussion and I, um, I would love to have you back on in future episodes. And I look For forward sure. to our YouTube conversation. Amazing. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you no, so much. Great. Perfect. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye, Liam. Bye now.